welcome everyone to Frontier Nursing University's DNP informational slash question and answer session. There will be certain times throughout the presentation that I'll ask you to unmute and ask us any questions you may have. So if you don't mind, you can either write your questions in the chat as we're going and we'll address them there, or when it's that time, we'll come back and we'll answer those questions. So for those of you who do not know, my name is Dr. Kara Jefferson and I am the program director of the DNP program. So it's nice to meet you all. So many of you are already, um, you already know about Frontier and so you know what we stand for. But here we have our mission statement, which is to provide accessible nurse midwifery and nurse practitioner education. Um, actually, this might be our, this is our old mission statement, I believe. Um, but our mission is to provide accessible nurse midwifery and nurse practitioner education that integrates the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we transform healthcare by preparing ethical, compassionate, innovative, entrepreneurial leaders to work with people, with all people, with an emphasis on rural and underserved communities. So the reason that I have this slide in here is because this encompasses what we do in the DNP. And there are some words in the mission statement that really stand out. One, compassion. Number two, innovative. Three, entrepreneurial. And four, leaders. Because our DNP is not like some of the other DNPs out there. We don't just have a leadership component or a health policy component or a quality improvement component. We're a little bit of all of it. So when you join our DNP program, you get a little bit of everything because we feel that that's what's needed to make you a DNP prepared scholar. So in this session, we will cover why FNU. You have a whole bunch of choices out there to, for your DNP. So why do you want to come to FNU? Also, why do you even want to get a DNP? Because I think that it's really important that you, you understand your why. We'll go over the programs of study, the admissions criteria, the DNP project, how to get started, and a little bit of what we do in the DNP as far as professional advising goes. So FNU is a distance, our DNP program, just like all of our FNU programs, it's a distance learning program. Your home community becomes your actual classroom. We're not asking you to step outside of that. You'll learn later on that it's one of the reasons that our over 800 DNP graduates have come to us because they're making a difference in their own communities. Most of our, at least probably 90% of our DNP students actually complete their DNP project where they're already employed if their site allows them to do it. So we're not asking you to go outside of that and do some great big thing that is not meaningful to you. We want this to be meaningful to you and your community. So you can study from the comforts of your home on your own time. And the only thing that we ask is that you come to Versailles, Kentucky for our orientation session that we call DNP Bound. And so that session looks a little bit different depending on whether you are a companion DNP student, meaning you have attended Frontier for your master's degree or your postgraduate certificate program, or if you're coming to Frontier completely new to us as a postmaster's DNP student. So for those of you who have not ever been to our campus, here is what it looks like. We have um, several buildings. The first picture is a picture of what our um, lodging looks like for when you will come and you will stay. The second picture is what we call our president's house where we hold a reception during our bound experience. The third picture is a picture of our welcome center, which is where every single student checks in when they come to campus. 
And then there are just various views. In the middle at the bottom is our picture of our dining hall where our DNP students love to congregate and hang out because it's just a nice space. And this last picture is just a sign that you see as you are walking um, or driving up to campus. So why FNU? Well, aside from our great campus, we used to be up in the mountains of Kentucky and Hyden, but now we have been in Versailles for a few years. It's located 10 minutes outside of the Lexington airport. But aside from that, Frontier has over 80 years of experience in graduate nursing and midwifery education. So we know how to do distance education and we know how to do it very well. Our students and our alumni represent every single state in the United States. We've had over 8,000 graduates from all of our programs family, psych and mental health, midwifery, women's health. Um, and like I said, we have a whole bunch of experience doing distance education, which is online education, even before it became a big thing during COVID. We were doing a really good job at it. Frontier has got a number of other achievements, and these include being recognized in 2021 and 2022 as one of the great colleges to work for. We were recognized for that. We've also have the Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award in 2022. And we've also received the International Distance Learning Award from the United States Distance Learning Association in 2021. So if you choose us, you are choosing an institution that is known for receiving all of these awards and greatness, and with that, a very caring and supportive faculty. You are supported in many ways at Frontier. We have online student groups. We have student-to-student -student support. We have, um, recently, we have new student groups where you can join student interest groups or SIGs based on what you're interested in. So if you're interested in veterans, there's a veterans group. That's just one of many examples. We also provide opportunities where faculty can become your mentors. If there's something that you want to work on and you or you have a passion about, we find this out and we pair you with faculty. Um, financial aid is available. We have an awesome, awesome group of librarians that you will come to know in the DNP department because they are instrumental to you shaping your DNP project. And we also have our diversity impact program. So that's just a little bit of a small sampling of the items in which we help to support you here at Frontier. So you guys already know, I already introduced myself, but yes, I am the director of the DNP program, but not just that, I'm also course coordinator for one of the courses in the DNP, and I have taught in the DNP program my entire time at Frontier Nursing University. I'm also alumni. Um, the way that our system works is in our courses, you have course coordinators and course faculty in every course. You are also assigned an academic advisor who helps you plan your academic plan of study. You meet with a financial aid officer and you also get to know some of these people a lot more when you come to campus for our DNP bound session. And then we also have a set of credentialing coordinators who help get your site credentialed for your DNP project. So whether that is your place where you're employed or the place you're volunteering, just know that you are very well supported in all that you are engaging in here at Frontier. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about why you should even get a DNP. So like I said, your DNP is your clinical practice doctorate. And I feel like this is a good time for me to distinguish between why get a DNP versus why you should get uh, why maybe not a PhD or an educational doctorate or even a doctorate in midwifery because there are a few very small number of schools that offer that. So a PhD is really more research-based. You will do research on a topic and then at the end of that, you will have a 
dissertation that you write. So it's going to be a whole bunch of papers, a big, big, huge paper at the end. And then at the end of that, you stand up and you defend it. Whereas with your DNP, we are highly clinical focused. It is a clinical practice doctorate. So here at Frontier, our focus is on quality improvement. And that is something that you will use in any environment, especially in clinical practice, because we know that it takes an average of 17 years to implement new knowledge into clinical practice. So that means that sometimes, a lot of times, the textbooks that we're asking you to get or the textbooks that you got for your master's program, that textbook is out of date by the time you guys are even reading the textbook. We want you to be a thousand percent relevant at anything. And that's where your DNP comes in. So if you're a midwife and you're watching this, you're like, okay, so she still hasn't made a case for why I should get this clinical DNP versus a doctorate of midwifery. Well, when you get your DNP overall here at Frontier, you can do your DNP in any topic you want, just like if your specialty is midwifery, if your special is adult gero, if your special is pediatrics, whatever your specialty is, you can do your DNP focused in that area here at Frontier because my faculty are experts in quality improvement. You're the expert already in whatever area of practice you're working in. We are just fine honing those skills and advancing those skills so that you also get the leadership skills that maybe you didn't get in your master's program, but we're enhancing all of that. You can also teach with your DNP. So there are programs that offer you an educational doctorate, but when you finish that program, all you can do with that is teach. When you have a DNP, it's a more broad degree. And so you can use that same degree to teach like I'm doing, or you can advance your career and get a leadership or management position in your role which is what several of our Frontier graduates have done. Our faculty are always happy to write letters. So when you look at the DNP overall, if your thing is not research, then this is actually the best degree for you to get. It's also your terminal degree. You have real world experience. We're not asking you to go outside of yourself. We're just taking the skills that you already have and you're enhancing them. And you may or may not get a raise. That's not something that I can promise you. It just kind of depends on your clinical site. So what are the admissions criteria if you're a postmaster student? You have to come into Frontier with a master's degree in nursing, um, master's of science in nursing, master's of science, master's in nursing, just something related master's degree and the admissions criteria can help fine hone those criteria for you. But the most important thing is that you have an active registered nursing license in the United States with no encumbrances. There are people who've come to these sessions and are like, I live in Australia, can I do your DNP? Yes, absolutely. As long as you are licensed in one of the United States. If you're only licensed in Australia, then no, you have to get licensed in one of the U.S. states in order to do it first. And you have to have national certification as a nurse midwife or a nurse practitioner. And that's just national certification. You must have at least a 3.0 grade point average. And you must also pass, be able to pass our background check. Those are some of the admissions criteria. If you are a current Frontier Nursing University student or have graduated in the last couple of years and you're coming straight through, there is a direct admissions process. Same thing. You have to have a master's degree in nursing, which you've already gotten if you're in our program or you will be getting. You have to have a current active RN license with no encumbrances. You write a narrative statement and we also do a background check. The difference is the direct admissions process is a little bit shorter the application process is a little bit shorter than if versus if you're a postmasters. Here's the other difference. If you are a postmaster student, our DNP program is 30 credit hours, which means our plan of study is now 18 months. We offer every single course, every single term, which you'll find is different from a lot of schools. A lot of schools you have to wait 
for a term or two to be able to take courses over and over, but we offer every course, every single term and your actual clinic project begins in term three. If you are a postmaster student, our terms are 11 weeks and then you have a two week break. The students do in between each term. So what does that look like? Well, this is what it looks like. The reason there's an asterisk next to some of these courses is because if you are a current Frontier student, you had the option to take three of these DNP courses in your plan of study. PC 702, Epidemiology and Biostatistics. PC 713, Principles of Independent Practice. Actually, that course has a new name. It's Fundamentals of Business Practices and Finance. Or PC 718, Evidence-Based Practice. If you took those courses, opted to take those courses as an FNU student in the past couple of years, since 2014, when we enacted the companion program, you may be eligible to get those courses to transfer into your DNP, which actually shortens your course workload to be um, 21 credits instead of 30 credits. But these are the didactic courses in the DNP, PC 711, Nurses Educator, PC 727, Ethics and Health Policy, and PC 728, Leadership and Organizational Dynamics. And in each course, it's practical application. So we do a lot of things in the DNP that are focused on Bloom's Taxonomy. And if you know Bloom's Taxonomy, you know that as you go on this stepwise ladder, you're getting more into the application level, whereas in your MSN program or even your Bachelor of Science program, we focused on getting you to learn the material so that you could be a clinician. Now we're advancing that and we're taking you to the next level. And then there are the project courses, which we call the clinical courses. You may hear us refer to them as that. And that's PC 739, which is your Pre-clinical prep, this is where we take care of all of your credentialing, get your site credentialed for your DNP project, but also really just get you set up for success so that you can go into PC740, which is your DNP clinical scholarship planning course, very well prepared to plan this project. It requires about 20, 30, 20 to 30 hours per week, and you must be on site at least two to three days a week, which is not a problem for most people if you are actually working in your clinical site. But if you're one of these people who will volunteer, just know that you have to volunteer in that site a minimum of two days per week. And then from planning, you go into project implementation, which is about 26 to 30 hours per week, and you must be on site a minimum of three days per week. And so when I'm explaining to you the number of days per week, I don't just mean that it has to be business days, Monday through Friday. It's all seven days of the week, whatever your work week looks like. We don't put those constraints on you. And then the only requirement for PC 744, the dissemination course, is that you must have your final presentation on site. And I'd also like to clarify here. When I say on site, it does not mean that you actually have to physically be located in a site. I'm one of the people who works telehealth and telehealth is considered a clinical site. So even you working from the comforts of your home, doing your telehealth job, there are many students who have completed successfully a DNP project in telehealth, but you will need to be working 11 to 20 hours. And when I say working these hours, are the number of hours that you're reading and doing your course assignments and thinking because the thought, the DNP requires that you think a lot. So we're very conscious about the times when we put here, or we know that it's not you cranking out the same assignments that you did in your MSN program. It's you thoughtfully putting these things together. So what do you need to know? We talked a little bit about the DNP bound experience, but let me expound on that just a little bit more. If you have attended Frontier in the last two years, so the last time you attended to Frontier was two years ago or less, you are eligible for our one day virtual bound option. You have to complete a form, but it's a Friday that we take up your whole Friday 
and we do the exact same thing abbreviated because we know you've already been to campus and you've already had a frontier bound experience. The DNP bound experience is not exactly that, which is why you have to attend this one day thing, but you're already familiar enough with frontier to know our ins and outs and some of our systems. If you are a postmaster student or you've been out of Frontier for more than two years, then you must come to campus for our two and a half day bound experience that starts on a Wednesday afternoon and it ends on a Friday afternoon. And you have to stay for the whole thing in order to get credit for it. But it is really great at establishing relationships and building relationships. And you get a chance to meet the faculty and staff who you'll be involved in or involved with during your time at Frontier. Like I said, we have the six practice-oriented didactic courses and then the DNP project courses that you will do over three terms plus the pre-planning course. Our next application deadline is September 27th in order for you to start coursework for our winter term, which starts in January. The next, um, Application deadline is January 10th for your coursework to begin April the 8th. So we have a rolling admissions process currently, which means that you can apply now to be, you know, as the deadlines come. It's So I like to think of it as first come, first serve. So the earlier you apply, they review your application process, and then once like we reach our quota of how many applicants we take a term, then you go on a wait list. So if you're interested in applying for any of these, you want to apply early. But this is also my plug in to you. You want to make your application look as good as possible. Meaning one of the things that we ask you to submit is a resume or a CV. So some things people don't typically think about, they're things that you should be putting on your CV. If you've had leadership experience, if you've had managerial experience, if you volunteer in the community, if you've ever published anything, maybe you've presented at a local or national conference. These are things that I want you to start thinking about and make sure that they're on that resume or CV because they really elevate you to the next level. You also complete, so you complete the online application. You have to write an essay. I know everybody doesn't like to write. But yes, right now we have you write an essay and then you submit professional um, references. So we don't want your references to be people that you already know and are going to say good things about you. We want to know that, hey, these are your leaders or your manager or somebody who supervised you who can say that you actually have what it takes. So these are the things that will strengthen your application. Of course, we ask for transcripts just like any other DNP program. Our tuition is highly affordable compared to most programs. If you go and you price us out, you'll see that. Our tuition is currently $665 per credit hour. And so you do the math, you're still paying roughly about 20 grand for our DNP program, which is very reasonable compared to most out there. So how do you begin the DNP? So like I said earlier, there are two methods, direct admissions, which is only for currently enrolled MSN and postgraduate certificate students, or the standard admissions process. Either you're returning to FNU or you're starting at FNU from scratch, you would go through our standard admissions application. So it Depends, like I said, on when you graduate and when you want to begin the DNP courses. So now I will take this opportunity to actually stop screen sharing for a minute and allow you to unmute and ask any questions. I didn't have the chat open, so I don't know what's headed there. So what questions do you have right now about admissions? Dr. Jefferson? Yes. Um, my name is Marcy or Marcella Fa, and I am Hi. currently working through the last of clinicals for my FNP at Frontier. I have run into so many glitches with scheduling for um, preceptors that I'm wondering uh, like, if I would be applying now for winter. I hope to be done through the fall quarter or through the fall term, 
But if there'd be more glitches with the uh, precepting hours, what happens if I'm applying for the winter term, but then I'm not completed to the point that I can actually get, enter the DNP program in the winter term? So that's a great question. So one of the things that, you know, and we do have someone here from admissions, but if you apply and then something happens, one of your circumstances changes, you can still defer for a term. You also made me think about something else as you were asking the question is, there are many students who are in Frontier who are facing like, you know, whatever it is with preceptors. But I will tell you that before you start your DNP, you also really want to have a good idea of the clinical site in which you will potentially be doing your DNP project because especially if you've opted in and you've taken Epi and Biostats, PC 713 and evidence-based practice. If you've taken any of those classes and you're going to start the DNP, the way that that plan of study works is you go into PC 739, which is our DNP clinical prep course in the first term. So you already need to have a clinical site ready to go. And so what some of our past students who were kind of in that situation do is they may use that site one of their last precepting sites to do their DNP project. But I never want people to get in a situation where you want to start the DNP, but you also want to start a new job. So, I, and I'm going to talk about this in the second half. So you really just want to be cognizant of your timing. And when I gave you guys those timelines, like the postmaster's plan of study is 18 months. The companion program of study is 12 to 15 months know that your actual degree completion timeline is different. So you don't have to take 18 months. You can take a little bit longer to finish that program of study. But yes, you always have the option to defer. Does that answer your question? Yes, I think so. And if, it, if I am not sure on the clinical site or exactly the project, am I able to apply even if I would have been ready in, in winter, still defer to spring. Yes. And so here's the, yes, I'm glad you asked that. So let me start here. Stop you for one second. You actually do not need to know what your project is going to be. You do not need to know what your project is going to be right now. You don't need to know what it's going to be on day one when you start this DNP project. We do a little bit of that advising during um, DNP bound. So you can come to DNP bound with some ideas, but it's not until you get into PC 739, the course that we actually talk to you and I assign you a faculty advisor. I see Dr. Collins Filet, who's one of the DNP faculty. She's here with us today. And so I assign you a DNP faculty advisor that you will have one-on-one -on -one meeting with to discuss your project. So the only thing that you need to know going into the DNP is, do I have a potential clinical site and are they willing to have me as a DNP student? Sounds great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other admissions questions? Uh, Samantha asks, and I might be going through these backwards, but asks, are you able to transfer any credits in for the DNP program? So that's a good question. And so we do talk about this at Bound 2. And the answer is yes, but. <laughs> and I know nobody likes the yes, but answer, but I think it's important because a lot of people think that because Frontier in the past offered those three courses as part of, hey, if you take these courses in your MSN and you continue on into the DNP, that they thought that they were master's level courses, when the reality was those students took DNP level courses, meaning those courses had DNP level competencies and essentials in them that we just allowed the MSN students to take. So you can transfer courses in if you read our policy um, in the catalog that states that, yes, you can apply for course transfer. You have to read the policy and ensure that the courses that you're transferring in were at the doctoral level, not your regular MSN courses, because we all took like an evidence-based practice course or something in our MSN program, but
but the MSN, the DNP level course that you take is completely different from the MSN level course. So that was a good question. Um, the question before that was from um, someone, are we able to complete the DNP program on a part-time basis? Absolutely. So you can complete the DNP program. If you are a postmaster student, you have two and a half years from the time you start the program to complete the program. If you are a companion student, remember the companion students are our current students are going through, you have two years. So I have some students who decide this plan of, stu this plan of study is great, but honestly, I also value my family and I value my time and I only want to take one course at a time and it works. You can do that. So that's what we have your academic advisors for. So they help you determine what's the best plan of action um, for you. And that's also why our plan of study includes all of the DNP project courses. You generally take those by themselves because of the time commitment that you'll be expected to invest in them. The three-day mandatory orientation, what do we expect or what happens during the three days? So honestly, it is truly a bonding experience, truly. It's more for you to get to know the people who you will be in classes with and you may move at speeds that are completely different, but it's also a chance for you to get to know who we are. Like we're not just saying, hey, we're this great school and we We've done distance education. We're saying, hey, I am Dr. Jefferson. I put my pants on the same exact way that you put your pants on every day. The only difference is like now you get to know me. You get to know. So you get to know Dr. Collins Foulet or whoever the faculty, the DNP faculty are. You get to know some of the academic advisors and you just get to see our overall culture. In the orientation, you meet people from the various departments because we have to explain and teach you different things about our systems, but really it's a chance for you to also come and ask all those lingering burning questions. Dr. Collins, Blay, do you have anything to add about that? No, except that it really is enjoyable for the faculty to, to be meeting the students and having some social time with the students and the, the ability to, to sit and just talk about the, the questions that you have and the concerns that you have without always having everything, every minute structured. So it's fun. It is, it's, it's, part, it's actually one of the best parts of our job because once you get into courses, we don't get that same kind of interaction on that one-to-one -one basis that we really have during Bound. So we all really enjoy that. I've seen a whole bunch of questions and thank you, Richard, for answering those. Um, about is our program accredited or authorized in certain states. So our DNP program is not like our MSN program where there are restrictions in some states, primarily New York. We, our DNP program, you can take it no matter where you are. Um, we don't have the same restrictions as far as New York goes because most people are already employed and we're not taking clinical sites away from other people. So yes, you can be in New York, any of the other states and still do a DNP project. In fact, you can be out of the country and complete your DNP project because we have had DNP students complete their DNP projects out of the country. So these are all great questions. Um, and Julia asks, for students interested in direct admissions, can we take a break between completing the MSN and start the DNP program? So yes. So if you are a current student, this is the one thing that I advise students because I get messages and emails from you guys all the time. You all have access to your current degree audit I highly suggest that you find your degree audit. And if you don't know where to find it, reach out to your current academic advisor. And at the very bottom of your degree audit, there is a link and it says transitioning to the DNP. In it, there's about 20 slides and it completely outlines the process for you on what to do at what point. If you haven't seen that, I highly, highly suggest that you take a look at that because I think that it's really, really comprehensive 
for you especially, whereas the postmaster's process is really more simplified and it goes kind of straight through, this process walks you through the step-by-step -step process. So like, if I want to do this at this point versus if I want to do this at a later point, it's all clearly outlined in that document. So if I'm working at my project site, could my work hours be used towards my clinical hours? So these are all great questions. So I guess, let me stop. I'll, I'm going to hold your question for the next set. So Dr. Collins, if you will write that down or remind me later. Um, right now, I really want to concentrate on the admissions part because we're about to go into the actual nuances of the DNP part. So does anybody else have any admissions questions? Hi, I do have an admissions question. How are you today? Hi, I'm um, good. How are you? Good, good. And thank you for all the information you've been sharing. So I think I might have jumped the gun with coming on to this presentation because I'm just starting as a master's student this fall. But I saw this presentation in my email. And one of the things that drew me to Frontier, one of the many things, um, was the optional direct entry for the DMP. Um, so that's always been a goal of mine. And I know that I'm going to want to continue with that at Frontier after my master's. Um, my question is when I was um, having my like initial uh, meetings with my enrollment advisor and everything, it was mentioned to me that at some point um, the direct entry is going to be changing. And um, so my question about that is being as though when I applied to the program, it was an option. Um, is that something that will still be an option to me when I get to the end of my program or will that change once it changes, um, you know, in the future? That's a great question. So my first question is, are you, when do you finish your MSN? Like what is your projected time? Um, so I start this fall, um, October is when I start my classes. Um, and so I believe the projection is in 2025. Okay. I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a, that's a great question. So you are correct in that the companion DNP program that we have had in the past is going away. Our last admissions, direct entry admissions into the companion program is next, uh, like 2025. So you can apply up until 2024, but start in 2025. Correct. Okay. Um, so we have not fully ironed out what that means, but we do recognize that for those people who are starting now, who came in on this later thing, we will have a solution. I can't tell you what that solution is okay. now. <laughs> right okay. now we have two different admissions processes where we admit you guys on a separate number um, versus the postmaster students. So right now it's the process is a little bit different, but it will, we're working on it. That's the best answer I can give. No, thank you. And if I could just have a, just one quick follow-up question to that, because the thought just occurred to me. So um, I know you mentioned earlier that when a student that is doing the companion program applies, that they can defer for a term. Um, and I'm thinking, so if this, it's changing in 2025 and that is my projected graduation. If I were to like how, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to ask this the way that I'm intending to, but how soon could I like, so if I wanted to apply in 2024, but I had maybe two terms left, is that too soon? Like, is there a certain amount, like yes. a certain gap of time that it has there to is, okay. there is. So if you're a current student, you have to be registered in one of the, I think it's one of the 716 courses okay. um, in order to do that. But it's, it's clearly, I promise you, if you can, it's outlined you can in that out means. it. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's I wrote outlined that in there. And okay. then it also depends because some students, like I said, it also depends on when you started, if your current program of study includes PC 702, PC 718, mm -hmm and or PC 7, um, 13. Mm -hmm. And so some of those courses are still offered, but all of those courses are going to convert to DNP. But yes, if you have like those specific nuanced things, like if yeah. you shoot me an email, I have a folder where I keep track of these <laughs> things. So please feel free to shoot me an email later so that okay. we keep this on the, on the radar. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions?
related to admissions. Okay, well, let me go back here, screen share all over again. All right. So now we're going to get into the DNV program. And this is like what lights me on fire and lights me up because I think it's the thing that most people worry about for their for our DNP. And honestly, you shouldn't really be worried about it too, too much right now. But when you come into our DNP, the big question we always get is, I want to do my DNP, but I have no idea what I want to do it on. So selecting a project topic. This is important because, like I told you, we follow the Institute of Healthcare Improvement Quality Improvement Model. That is what we do. It's what we're good at. It's what we're known for. And in that, every last one of our projects incorporates one of these Institute of Medicine domains, safe, effective, patient-centered, efficient, timely, or equitable care. But even more than that, when you select a project topic for your DNP, we call it a gap, um, it has to be evidence-based. So we're not nilly-willy pulling something out of thin air. We expect that you're going to talk to people within your site because it's part of what a leader does. We don't make decisions in a silo. We make decisions as a group on what's based, what's the best thing for our practice, what's the best thing for our patients, and what's based on actual evidence. So we want you to have a project topic that is driven by the needs of the site. So you need to meet with your service director or your quality improvement committee or department and figure out what it is that they want you to do something on. Some people come in here and they're like, but I really have this dream, Dr. Jefferson, of doing this on my, pro my, my passion. And that's great. But if there's really no need at your site for whatever that passion is, are you really doing a service to your community? That's why we focus on what's best for the patient. And all of our projects are population health projects, meaning we don't want you to do a DNP project and you're only going to have 10 people or 20 people that participate. No, we want you to have a project that impacts the greatest number of people within your site. That's population health. Your project must occur in a clinical setting. So it can't be... Um, a project where you're working in academia and you want to do a project on your faculty. You can't do that for our types of projects. Remember, this is a clinical doctorate. And our projects all have some degree of team and patient engagement. Like I said, we know that you're working on something to change care. And in order to change care, you have to have buy-in from stakeholders. You get to decide, that's the beauty of our process, you get to decide who those stakeholders are, you get to decide who's on your team, but you need to have that buy-in, and your project really needs to solve some kind of daily problem, something that you're seeing pretty often. In the pre-planning course, PC739 currently is what it's called, you will have the individualized counseling and feedback. That is why I pair you up with a Dr. Kathy Collins Foulet or Dr. Kristen Gianellis or any of my other project faculty so that you can really work through and brainstorm, is this project idea good or is this one a little bit better? And at that point, you have some of the raw numbers or an estimate of what kind of those numbers look like, how many patients you see a day, how many do you expect to see, that kind of thing. And we really confirm um, your topic ideas are your gap. We also clearly set expectations. I firmly believe managing expectations ahead of time is a whole lot easier than tell you telling me what I didn't do. So we want to get you set up for success. And that's why we have these advising sessions. We also talk to you about your program of study decisions. We recognize that you have an academic advisor, but we also know through doing this term after term after term over years that there are some little nuances that maybe if we change your plan of study, this is actually better for you than this other thing because we have inside knowledge of that. We talk to you about life, school, work balance because honestly, I think that is more important. And there are some people who will sit here and tell me, Dr. Jefferson, there's no such thing as balance. 
balance is what you think it is and what you make of it. So if you think there's no balance, then of course you'll never achieve balance. But our goal here is to support you. And people matter. People matter above all things. And so for me, in my mind, in order for you to be successful, we've got to determine what that looks like for you. And that's where you also get your clinical site and project topic approved, as well as you get your clinical credentialing performed. And you have a discussion, not just with me or the faculty, but you also have the discussions with your site about what all is involved and what's needed for them in order for you to be successful. So that's what pre-planning is. And like we think about Henry Ford and if he, this quote, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. They would have never envisioned the idea of an automobile. And that's kind of what we're asking you to do in this DNP project. We're asking you to look at things in a whole new way so that you kind of get the outcomes that you want. So what do we want you to consider as you plan ahead? Number one, do I have a potential clinical site? So that depends. Are you working? Because if you're working, your honest to goodness best bet is to go to your employer and say, I am going back to school to get my DNP and I need to do a DNP quality improvement. We need to do a quality improvement. Is there something that you're already working on that you could use my help with? You want to talk to people about those things. You can implement your DNP project either as an RN, because you've just graduated and you're just about to take boards, or that's where you want to stay to get this project done, or the APR enroll. That is completely up to you. We do not restrict you on, on that. Um, you can volunteer, as I said, but if you're volunteering, you've got to be very cognizant of time and you've got to understand time management skills. If you're starting a job, so this is particularly for our companion students who are just graduating and probably starting a new job, but it can also be some of our postmaster students who are transitioning from one job to another. Transitioning into a new role, it requires time. There's an onboarding process that we all have to go through. And so if you don't know the ropes at a new site, it's really hard for people to buy into what you're selling, meaning why would I invest in you and your project if you don't even know what's going on here? So we think that it's important for you to at least get familiar with where you are, the environment, the site, the people, before you just jump in head first in trying to do a project. Nobody wants to hear that it's my project. Nobody cares about my project. What people care about is how we can impact outcomes, how we can impact the practice financially. Those are the things that people care about. And we do that through evidence-based practice, which is what we're teaching you in this DNP degree. So we don't, we know those nuances, another reason for the faculty advising. Also, do I anticipate any major life events? If you're moving, if you're about to have a baby, if you are now becoming responsible for something else that's happening in your family and maybe grandma is moving in and you've got to take care of her or whatever the case is, or you have new church responsibilities. We want you to think about all of that because it also determines your program of study. Um, and also what does your schedule look like? All of these are things that I like for people to really think about as they're planning for their DNP. So the distance between who I am and who I want to be is separated by my actions and words. There are a lot of people who come to these sessions. There are a lot of people, many more people who watch the recording of these sessions. And so think back again, like I said at the beginning, what is your why? Because your why informs why you're getting your DNP. And that why is different from each of us. There's no right or wrong answer for who this is, but your actions speak a whole lot louder than your words. And what are you going to do to get yourself there? We know from experience, from us getting our DNP, that there will be obstacles. There will be doubters. There will be people who will tell you there's no need for you to have that DNP. Don't listen to those people. It's about you. 
there will also be mistakes made along the way on your part, on our part. None of us are perfect. We're all imperfectly perfect human beings, just as we are. But with hard work, there are absolutely no limits. You set your trajectory. And we know that our DNP program is very doable because we wouldn't have the over 800, almost 900 right now, successful graduates and projects that we have. We know that you can do it, but you've got to want to do it. And you've got to be able to make the time and the commitment to yourself and to your family that, yes, this is going to happen. If you have additional programs, and we will answer questions again, but after this, specifically about financial aid or anything like that, you can contact the financial aid office, financial aid at frontier.edu. If you have more admissions questions, you can contact FNU admissions at frontier.edu. If you have other questions specific to more specific things about your particular situation, feel free to email me, cara.jefferson at frontier.edu um, if you need. And so, like I said, success does not come to you. You go to it. And this is one of our real DNP graduates who graduated from our program here on this slide. And it is. It is an amazing feeling of accomplishment in not just knowing that you did it, like you got your DNP, which is your terminal degree, but that, oh my gosh, I'm a rock star. And because I now have the leadership and the quality improvement skills and even more savviness when it comes to health policy and finances that I can now go out and I can do any kind of project that is presented my way because we taught you the skills to do it. And that's what we do differently at Frontier. You not only know all of that stuff, you become part of a community of like-minded people. So I will stop screen sharing and now we can tackle some of the harder questions that you have. So feel free to unmute. Oh, I didn't answer that question. I did have that one question. If I'm working at my project site, could my work hours be count used to count toward my clinical hours? So thank you. I did not address this. But yes, absolutely. The way in which we designed our program, we designed it for the working clinician, which means... If you are implementing your project within your site, we have a form where you track your hours and you submit them to us. And so your hours that you're actually spent working on your project are the hours that are used for our accreditation purposes. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. And Rosalie answered the recording will be sent um, out to everyone that registered. What other questions do you have? This is the time to ask them. And you also not just have me and Dr. Collins really can answer questions too from the faculty perspective. How soon are we notified of acceptance decisions? Honestly, that is a great question, and it honestly depends on how many people have applied at the same time that you've applied and how quickly our faculty can get the admissions, um, the faculty file reviews complete, as well as the committee. So it could be in as little as two to three weeks, but it could also be, uh, you know, two to three months. Yes. So once you begin the DNP program, if you are considered a postmaster student, meaning you have been out of Frontier for more than two years, you have two and a half years to complete your DNP program. If you have been at Frontier within the last two years, you have two years to complete your program. So here's the other thing that I will also throw out as a caveat. We have rules and we like to stick to the rules and the policies, but we're not going to kick somebody out who has one DNP course yet left and they're up against the two and a half year policy. All you have to do is write me a letter and I take that letter to our committee and we appeal 
like we ask for a one-term extension if that's what you need. So we have policies and procedures in place. So your handbook, your Frontier Nursing University course handbook, um, the catalog will be very important for you to learn our policies and procedures. And that's also one of the things that we go over with you during our DNP bound sessions. Um, let's see, the questions are coming now. And now I lost my place. Has anyone on the DNP faculty done the DNP during their MSN? If so, can you expound on the experience? So I don't think any of my current faculty are on here. Like I did it, Dr. Collins Filet and I did it, but I can tell you that Dr. Collins Filet and I both did this DNP program. So maybe she can just tell you a little bit about that experience. Uh yeah, sure. I did it as a postmaster's. So I had done my master's in nurse midwifery back in the 80s. So it was a long time between when I did that and when I started the DMP in 2018 or 17. And um, it was it's a little hard going back to school and learning, but I'm a, a quality improvement geek anyway. So it was right up my alley and I enjoyed the other courses. Statistics took a little bit of refreshing to get back into statistics, but you know the the faculty here is in every program is so um, supportive and um, encouraging and willing to meet with students, do extra whatever we need to help you to be successful. So I I thoroughly enjoyed the time as a student. Now of course my faculty, my continuity faculty was Dr. Jefferson, so I was lucky. Um, to have her as my continuity faculty, but uh, it, it um, our job is to help you learn and to help you be successful. And we really take that seriously. It's not just, oh, I got to grade these papers, whatever, but really, oh gosh, maybe she's not understanding. Maybe I'll give her a call. Maybe we need to meet so that we can talk about it to make sure that, you know, this person is understanding where you're going. So I think for that reason, I was very happy that I did the program here, and I'm very happy to be a faculty here also and be able to give back to the, the students who are coming up that um, with or without those who struggle, there's someone put something in here about learning disability with ADD. Um, we find a way to work with you. We find a way. Um, we have lots of students who have some, some disabilities that we're working with. Yeah, and we also here at Frontier, part of the support system is we have an ADA coordinator. So if you have accommodations, special accommodations, or that kind of thing, we have an office that deals with that whole thing. Um, you have to submit documentation, but yes, we do have all of that. Um, if I can't find a project topic, can the school offer me one? So we don't know what's happening in your site. We can give you ideas. There's tons of ideas. And we do speak a lot about that during Bound, um, the DNP Bound experience. So you will definitely leave from that with some potential ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you, you have to know your site, you have to know your volume, but we will talk with you and we'll talk you through um, where do you see problems now? Where do you see this? Well, what about this idea? What about this idea? So it's not that we give you the topic, but we help you work through figuring out a topic. I see a question here. Um, if I start a postmaster certificate in 2024, will I be eligible for the companion DNP in 2025 or will I have to reapply separately? So that is a great question and one that I technically do not have the answer to. I don't know if Richard has the answer to that, but it's a process that we are still working on because like I said, this is all new to all of us. And so there's a little bit of growing pains that go, that occurs with each of that. But once you start your program, I highly, highly encourage you to let your intentions be known to your academic advisor, because that is the person who can really guide you into making the best decisions for that. How many clinical hours does a practicing APRN need to graduate? How many years will it take? 
APRNs to complete the program. So our current, our standard length of time is 18 months to complete the program. And you must have a minimum of 360 clinical hours, which is very, very doable. So I hope that answers your question, Joe. It's completely up to you. I have people who do the program in 18 months. I have people who do the program in 24 months. So I have people who take, you know, the full two and a half years. It's completely dependent upon you and your schedule, which is the beauty. And like I said, we offer every single course, every single term. So it's not like you're ever missing out on any of the content. So if you're starting in January, Beatrice, um, if you're starting the DNP, are you asking? Can you clarify? Because if you're starting the DNP in January, your bound date is going to be in November. You will come to campus in November. And I'll post that in the chat as well, the application deadline and the uh, DMP bound dates. Perfect. Thank you. I also will say that I know that there's generally a lot of hesitation to come to the ba to bound. We hear it every single term, but I have not had one student who came to bound and said, I regret coming because even though people come hesitantly, by the end of it, you do truly meet a whole new friend, like whole new friends, and you truly get an appreciation of who we are. The bound cannot be done online unless you are a current PGC or MSN student. Any other questions? I would, I don't have a question, but I would like to provide some feedback if that's okay. Absolutely. Perfect. So I've been to other um, question answer sessions, information sessions for DMP programs. And um, honestly, you guys are doing a great job. I'm impressed. Um, you'd be surprised what kind of things I've run across, but um, you seem to actually be enjoying to be part of this program, to bring students in. Sounds like even mentioning the life work balance, study balance, that you actually care for the students versus just let's get you in enrolled and you know, see you later kind of thing. So I appreciate uh, the genuineness that you guys are showing as far as being interested in, in us as students. Thank you. That's so sweet. I'm getting all teary eyed right here. I, I, I believe in investing in people because you guys are you're the future. We're all the future. And the more we know, the better, the better we are. And I, I feel so strongly that we have a really, really good product. And we have that really good product because we have the right people in place. And every last one of my faculty cares about people. There are students who have finished and they still text me, right? So I have students that finished who still text me. And we have current students that like, if you need to schedule a meeting, like we make ourselves available. So the support here is truly amazing. So I really appreciate that comment. It makes me feel like validation that we are doing the right thing. So if you guys have any other questions specifically related to the project, feel free to reach out to me. If you have admissions questions, reach out to admissions and Richard has dropped a few of the links in the chat. Um, oh, that's really nice. As a current FNU, FNP, MSN student, I can definitely vouch for the support being amazing. So. Thank you for coming. I know we went four minutes over, but I truly appreciate your time.